So far we've been looking at monoprotic acids, weak acids that generate one hydrogen ion in solution. Now let's look at diprotic and triprotic acids. They may yield more than one hydrogen ion per molecule. They ionize in a stepwise manner, that is, they lose one proton at a time. An ionization constant expression can be written for each ionization stage. Consequently, two or more equilibrium constant expressions must often be used to calculate the concentration of the species in acid solution. Here's an example. So hydrogen carbonate dissociates into H plus and HClO3 minus, and Ka1 is as written. The bicarbonate anion HCO3 minus further dissociates into H plus and CO3 2 minus and we have a Ka2 expression for that. This is typical of the di and polyprotic acids. This table shows you the structures and the different Ka's. Let's look at molecular structure and acid strength. For an acid like HX, the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid will be. That's why HI is stronger than HBr, is stronger than HCl, which is much stronger than HF, which is a weak acid. The acidity increases as you go down the group. Let's look at molecular structure and oxoacid strength. The OH bond will be more polar and easier to break if the Z atom is very electronegative or Z is in a high oxidation state. Here are some examples. Carbonic acid, nitrous acid, nitric acid, etc. Oxoacids having different central atoms, different Zs, that are from the same group and have the same oxidation number. Acid strength increases with increasing electronegativity of Z. So compare HClO3 and HBrO3. Cl is more electronegative than Br. It's closer to fluorine. Therefore, HClO3 is a stronger acid than HBrO3. Here, the acid acidity increases as you go up the group. With oxoacids having the same central atom but different number of attached groups, the acid strength increases as the oxidation number of Z increases. Here's an example of hypochlorous, chlorous, chloric, and perchloric acid. Notice that the more oxygens you have, the stronger the acid. HClO4 is stronger than HClO3, etc. Let's look at the acid-base properties of salts. Salts can be, salt solutions can be neutral, acidic, or basic. Neutral solutions occur when salts containing an alkali metal or alkaline earth metal, group 1 or group 2, except for beryllium, and the conjugate base of a strong acid like chloride, bromide, or nitrate. So for example, sodium chloride forms sodium ion and chloride ion, and that's a neutral solution. A basic solution occurs when salts derive from a strong base and a weak acid dissociate. So here we have sodium acetate. When it dissolves in water, it will form sodium ion plus that acetate anion. The acetate anion makes the solution basic. Acidic solutions are from salts derived from a strong acid and a weak base. Here we have ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride in water forms ammonium ion and chloride ion. The ammonium ion makes the solution acidic. Salts with small highly charged metal ions, cations, like Al3+, Cr3+, and beryllium2+, and the conjugate base of a strong acid form acidic solutions. So far we've had two definitions of acids. The Arrhenius, a substance that produces H plus in water. A Bronsted acid is a proton donor. Now we want to look at a Lewis acid, which is a substance that can accept a pair of electrons, and a Lewis base, which is a substance that can donate a pair of electrons. 
the hydroxide ion can donate a pair of electrons to the hydrogen ion. So the hydrogen ion is a Lewis acid and the hydroxide ion is a Lewis base. Here we have ammonia and the hydrogen ion. Again, the pair of electrons can be noted, donated to the H+, forming the ammonium ion. The H+, is an acid, and the ammonium, ammonia, is a base. Here is an adduct between boron trifluoride and ammonia. Again, the ammonia acts as a Lewis base, and the boron trifluoride is a Lewis acid.